Hey my demigods, what's going on? It's Noah the 30th Olympian, and today for you guys, I'm going to bring you all my Medusa build guide post the mid-season patch of season 4. So hopefully you all do enjoy, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more. So, I'm going to go ahead and quickly apologize in advance if I sound a little tired in my voice. This is like my fifth or sixth time recording this video. Uh, last, like, the first time I was recording this, uh, apparently my mic wasn't picking up my mic, even though, like, I went back and checked the settings, and, like, my mic was set as, like, the main mic. So I don't know what was going on with that. Uh, and the last few times, honestly, I don't even know what happened. I kind of went on a t to random rants about <laughs> what you should do in situations. And it didn't really have anything to do with the build. It was more like very situational. And it was honestly like a complete tangent as to what the build guide was, uh, what I was trying to do in the build guide. So I apologize in advance. And I also want to say this is going to be my new, um, I guess, format for my build guides. My last build guide, my Osiris build guide. And my build guides beforehand. Uh, I usually did uh, my guides in the uh, like God Builder in the menu, uh, in the main menu. But <laughs> that was like a really lame, sucky way and lazy way of doing it. I honestly, I had completely forgotten about jungle practice, and so I'm gonna start doing my build guides in here. Uh, it's a lot more interactive, and I can actually show you guys what I'm talking about. So to kick the build off, we'll actually be doing the abilities first, and then we'll move on to the items and different variants uh, builds you can be doing. I'm gonna be mainly be focusing on the solo lane and the ADC because um, those are the two positions I mainly play so for the first ability you're going to be getting as Medusa is her 2 obviously just because it's her main clear of the build and there's really no argument you can make for anything else unless you're maybe a 1v1 or something then you can maybe get her uh, her 1 but other than that that's even that that's a weak argument so go for her 2 it'll provide you with a lot better clear as I hit level 2 I usually like to hit, get my 3 next because this is, uh, will allow for quick escape or for a quick catch up to my opponent if they're really low and I can do a little bit more damage uh, possibly with a 2-1 combo or maybe just by catching up with my 3 and then throwing a couple autos at them maybe that'll secure a kill in the early game when you hit level 3 I usually get my 2 next again because it'll provide more damage early on when I hit level 4 you're going to want to get your 1 when you hit level 5, you're going to want to get your 4. And then from there on out, you're going to want to uh, upgrade your or max out your 2. That'll be the first ability you max out. Then your 1. Then your 3, because you really have no other choice other than to max out your 3 before your ult. However, whenever you get the chance, put an ability into your uh, ultimate. Because it does really decent damage and the slow does increase. Uh, plus, if you're able to somehow, I don't know, get the stun off on your opponent, that's basically a free kill right there. And other than that, let's move on to the build. So for the ADC, I'm going to focus on the ADC, and there's about two builds I usually go with very minor variants in between. Uh, first off, you want to go want to go ahead and build Bluestone Pendant. Uh, you can make the argument of going Deathstroke for the extra sustain, but I usually go Bluestone for the extra clear it provides and the mana, because uh, Medusa is a very mana-hungry god. Uh, next, Bumba's Mask. Uh, this is an item that a lot of people have been getting, mainly because... Uh, it allows you to clear jungle camps quicker and allows you to sustain a lot better, especially in the camps. If you're low or something, uh, you can go ahead and hop into the jungle, take a camp, and heal back up. And the strategy a lot of people have been doing, myself included, is before heading off to lane, clearing the red buff, then purple buff, you should be level 2 at that point, uh, unless you get uh, invaded or something. Uh, and then you'll have two abilities there, and you should be able to clear the wave a lot quicker. And then, uh, I usually get finish that off with I think you'll have enough gold for two healing pots and two mana pots maybe even less than that if I'm not mistaken the next item you build uh, after Bumba's is warrior tabby you can make the argument of going ninja tabby for the extra attack speed and mana I understand that but um for me I usually build ninja tabby in another build in the second build I'll be showing you guys after this so warrior tabby mainly for the power and for this build after warrior tabby transcendence uh, like I said earlier Medusa is a very mana hungry god and Transcendence allows her to keep up with her mana uh, and provides a lot of really decent power. Uh, I, I'll, I'll get full stacks as I'm talking about this. Um, actually never mind, I'll get full stacks in a little bit. Uh, I just realized because I can't really like buy items over there so Transcendence just provides a lot of good power. By the way in both builds you will be building Transcendence um, unless you're there's a very situational where you will build uh, Gauntlet instead but I'll talk about that later on. After Transcendence, uh, I usually go into Kins, uh, excuse me, Executioner. Kinsize is a lot later on. Uh, I go into Executioner for the penetration. However, you could instead go Tabby 
Ikaval Transcendence because Transcendence is a costly item. So going into something along the lines of Ikaval, it's uh, it's a lot cheaper, and it provides decent attack speed and the penetration and passive are great. So you can go Ikaval uh, Transcendence if you would like, but usually for my build, uh, it's Tabby Transcendence Executioner. After Executioner, this is where it kind of depends. If you're behind, you could go for something cheaper uh, along the lines of Rage or uh, instead of going into Kin Size, because Kin Size costs I think 300 more if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Rage is 2400, so you could, could go into Rage mainly just because it costs less than it than Kin Size. But usually I would go into Kin Size, uh, build Rage and my crit items later on. Uh, mainly just because Kin Size allowed me to counter build against the support, anyone else building health on their opponent's team. if maybe the mid laner is building a warlock sash or even their solo laner if they're going against uh, a mage in the solo lane however it's very unlikely you'll be fighting the solo laner unless it's in a team fight but that being that aside kin size is still a great item it allows you to shred your opponents next you're going to want to sell your blue stone first uh you really you don't really need it for the man anymore and i'm pretty sure if you have full stacks transcendence and uh, max tier two you can probably i think you can clear wave at that point so you don't really need the blue stone um, the Bumbles is still great for the uh, sustain, of course. So after you sell uh, Bluestone, you're going to want to go into Rage, start building stacks on that. Uh, at the end of its stacks and everything, I believe it gives you like around 35% uh, critical strike chance, which is great uh, by itself. And then if once you sell Bumbas and go into Deathbringer, you'll have 55% uh, at full stacks. Uh, this is usually the build I would go for. Uh, if I'm feeling more ahead uh, in the game, uh, I'll usually go the second build because the second build costs a little more. And uh, it's a lot more powerful, I think. Um, especially with the. Uh, you're gonna be getting Oboe with that build. So the splash damage is insane. I'm just gonna kinda sit here for a little bit and build some stacks. Uh, some variants you can build in the solo lane is instead of going. Uh, into Bumba's Mask, you just go straight into Boots, and then if you're going into if you're going against the Mage, build Silver Branching Bow. Uh, on the other hand, if you want to get some decent power, you can actually start building into something along the lines of uh, Gauntlet. Uh, Life Steal has taken kind of a hit; it's not as powerful as it used to be. Uh, but if you're going if you're in solo lane, um, getting something along the lines of like gauntlet will give you decent power you build you'll be building stacks and you do life stealing so you have really good to stand uh, especially if you don't have death bringer or death toll excuse me uh however in the adc lane so i want i said i'd talk about death uh, gauntlet earlier so in the adc in the dual lane um if you are going against someone who's poking you out a lot out poking you there's really nothing you can do about it um an item you can go into is gauntlet mainly because it allows you to stay in a lot more uh, and of course there's the downside you have to build the stacks but you'll be able to sustain a lot more um, you won't be you know, completely shredded you won't have to back all the time if you're being outpoked you'll just have to heal off of maybe a few minion waves maybe even go to the jungle camp uh, and heal off of that so for the second uh, build uh, that I've also seen people go me myself included um, let me sell that real quick transcendence stays the same in both builds uh, on the other hand, uh, also the starter items will stay the same, I, f I should mention that. You should still build uh, Bluestone Bumbas. Uh, instead of Warrior Tabby, uh, you can go Ninja Tabby, uh, mainly because this build uh, kind of lacks a little bit in attack speed. The only other attack speed item you're getting in this build is um, uh, Oboe, so if you want some more attack speed, going into Ninja Tabby isn't a bad idea. Excuse me, the only downside to that is that you won't be getting anything from the mana because you already have transcendence, so you really don't need a hundred extra mana to begin with. Excuse me, I like I'm like fighting back the urge to cough. Uh, so after you build uh, Ninja Tabby Transcendence, you can start going into uh, Shifter Shield. Uh, now, actually, instead of going Transcendence first, you can go Ninja Tabby Shifter Shield then into Transcendence because Shifter Shield provides seventy power as is, and Transcendence isn't really needed. If you have that extra 70 power. So, uh, Ninja Tabby, Shift to Shield, uh, Transcendence, uh, and then after Transcendence, um, 
you can A, go into Odysseus Bow now, or B, you can go into Ichable, start building some attack speed at least, um, and then uh, go into Transcendence. So it would be Ninja Tabby, Shifter Shield, Ichable, and then Transcendence. Uh, because you already have decent power with Shifter Shield, but with Transcendence you're going to have a lot of extra power, uh, which uh, will come in handy when using the Splash Damage ability of Odysseus Bow. And then the last two items are going to be Rage, I don't know why I sold Rage, I still needed those stacks, and Deathbringer. Uh, however, items you can substitute for these are instead Titan's Bane, if I can find it, and Concise. You don't really need Executioner if you have Titan's Bane, but I've seen people, and you, you actually can go Titan's Bane and Executioner, uh, one for shredding objectives, one for shredding opponents. Either way is fine, but I like concise mainly just because I'm counter building against someone who's building health. And then of course your last item is going to be Odysseus Bow. Uh, with this uh, form of build you're going to be having 1.93 attack speed, which I think actually might even be more than your other build. However, the other build, uh, the, crit strike, the critical strike chance, <laughs> there we go, uh, provides a lot of extra damage. So I'm hitting for about 250 in auto here. Actually, you can even say 300 if you want to include um, Concise. And then Oboe is proccing about 145. So, overall, really decent damage. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention actually is even though you can't really build it on Hunters anymore, is Haste Fatalis. Um, I think now they, for Hunters, anyways, it's Atalanta's bow. I wouldn't really recommend going into Atalanta's bow. One thing that Medusa was really good at with Haste and Fatalis, uh, it really helped and improved her passive. Her passive was like, th is, is it's still pretty good, but Haste and Fatalis still was really good uh, because it, she didn't have any uh, penalties from strafing or she didn't have, she I think she had half, half moves to penalty from back, uh, going backwards. So you can really kite enemies if you had Fatalis, however, they removed that. Medusa is probably a big reason why they removed Haste and Fatalis from the game. Instead, they put it into uh, two separate items uh, for the melee gods and the mage mages, and then of course for the hunters, they have Atlantis Bow. Uh, unless you can build, I, I don't think you can build, I think it's Haste and Katana. And you can't build into that uh, tree as a hunter, fortunately. So I wouldn't really recommend going into Atlantis Bow unless you really want the movement speed. But other than that, let's go into the relics, I guess. Um, for the most part, you're going to be building Purification Beads, Aegis Amulet. Uh, these are really just good relics to go all all, all in all. Uh, if you're solo laning, you can go uh, Teleport Glyph. And then your second relic would just depend on who you're going against. Uh, it'd be situational. Uh, same with your Aegis Amulet. Uh, I mean, Purification Beads is pretty standard, especially against uh, the CC that your opponent's uh, support will be playing. Uh, will be doing and so uh, I've, I mean I've seen as the second relic I've seen people go uh, I've seen Bracer which is a really powerful item uh, I've seen Shield of Thorns which I mean going against another HC isn't all that bad but I would still probably honestly I'd rather go Aegis Amulet over Thorns um, oh solo lane build that's what I forgot to do so for the solo lane um, everything is just about the same as solo lane. It just depends if you're ahead or behind. So that was all the ADC build for the solo lane. I'm just going to go through it really quick. First item, Bluestone Pendants. Uh, second item, uh, Warrior Tabby. Third item, now this would depend if you're ahead or you're behind. If you're behind, um, you could go more of the safe route and start building into some uh, defense. Um, let's see. Breastplate is just 2300. Shifters is 2500, so I would honestly go Shifter Shield over Breastplate here. However, you could go Breastplate for the cooldowns, and if you're Medusa, the mana is also really great because you aren't really going to be building Transcendence here. Uh, so having the mana from Breastplate will really help, uh, being as ma uh, Medusa is mana hungry. But I would honestly opt for Shifter Shield. However, instead of Shifter Shield, uh, you can go Ichable, then into Shifter Shield. It just depends if you're behind or ahead. After those, actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and get Ichable real quick. Or actually, if you're against the mage as well, Silver Bench is a good item uh, to go as into. Uh, and then earlier, I, th I said you can go into Devourer's Gauntlet. Um, 
This is if you're, of course, if you're being outpoked, or if you really, really just need to sustain, because you don't have Death Toll to sustain off of in your build. However, later on in the game, you could go Bloodforge. However, if you really need to sustain uh, at the moment in like the mid game, early game, uh, going Devourer's Gauntlet would be better. Uh, Bloodforge will be better off if you're. Uh, it just gives you more power and. On the downside, however, it does cost like 800 gold more, so that's why Blood Forge is uh, built later on in the game now. Uh, so, like I said, throw his gauntlet over Blood Forge. Yes. Uh, and then after that, it's mainly just like Executioner, Kin Size. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm sorry, the, the chair is like really squeaky. It's like a foldable chair and it's kind of annoying. Executioner, Kin Size. Uh, maybe even, like I said, uh, Breastplate of Valor. Um, Honestly, in the solo lane, it's very, the build is similar, but there's of course changes just depending on who you're going up against. Um, and yeah, other than that, guys, hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all learned something from this build guide. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you all did. If there's anything uh, about my builds that you would like to let me know in the comment section below, anything good, bad, anything I, I don't know, neutral, <laughs> let me know in the comment section. If there's anything I can change about my build guides, uh, let me know in the com comment section below. Any criticisms, anything you liked, disliked. Let me know. Other than that, I will see you all next time. Peace.